Okay, so finally the uh, ball bearing turbo build is is nearly finished. Um, obviously, please bear in mind that this is not the finished article yet. There's a few snagging items that need to be uh, need to be attended to. So, silly little things like um, the tails on the back of these Jubilee clips need to be trimmed down, or um, it's possible that I might try and get uh, try and get some correct size Jubilee clips so they're just a little bit tidier. Um, you know, things like this. So. The downpipe um, was basically a modified version of the downpipe that we already had on. So quite simply what we did was we welded the uh, V-band onto the original downpipe, but we had to put a, a small extension on there as you can see. Um, so that that uh, that's one thing. Now this, this entire section here will obviously be covered in the heat shield. Um, the heat shield should be fitted later on um, later on this week. Um, the actual outlet from the turbo itself, so the compressor outlet, is obviously a different angle to the one that uh, you find normally on the Insignia. So obviously you've had to sort of modify a pipe to come out of there and then down into that pipe and into the standard um, intercooler piping. Now it is possible that with a little bit of extra time you might actually be able to come out of here and then actually go straight down and then into the intercooler. But quite honestly just wanted to get the car running um to see what it was uh, what it was running like uh, it, it is possible that um reducing the length of the intercooler hose would give us a little bit a little bit of an improvement in the delivery time of the uh, boost but it, it's not going to be any by any huge amount and bearing in mind that we've already improved that anyway because obviously the ball bearing turbo spools up much faster um the Oil feed is a custom line here, um, which runs from the normal place on the Insignia and then just goes straight into the turbo itself. Um, obviously, we had to weld on um, a V-band onto the turbo, uh, which you can see there. Um, the other V-band, you can see right at the very bottom there, we welded a V-band onto the standard um, manifold. So the standard manifold had to be taken out ground out a little bit because the actual turbo this this particular turbo um which is on off a 2019 bmw uh the the inlet into it was a lot bigger than the hole which was in the standard insignia manifold uh both engines are a two liter so you know it was just simply a case of making that hole slightly larger before we welded the v-band on um did clean up the inside of the manifold a little bit as well just to, you know just taking away a few sort of casting marks and you know uh, just just really poor design really to be perfectly honest just improved upon it ever so slightly the pipe going into the turbo, as you can see here, um, is, is a much larger item. So this one is now 80 millimeter from the MAF all the way into the turbo. Um, the, the turbo on the, uh, sorry, the inlet on the compressor side was much larger than the standard uh, standard version on the Insignia. So obviously we had to accommodate that with a larger pipe. We've got the oil breather fitted into there. That was, that was quite simple, really. It was just a case of sort of drilling a 24 mil hole with a hole saw into the actual intercooler hose and then just literally just fit in this as normal. Um, yet to be seen whether we can fit the cover back on. Obviously you've got to tidy up where all those wires are. They're, they're, they're all sort of like jammed in at the moment, but it would be nice to actually sort of tidy that up, get it much cleaner. Again, all snagging list things that will be done in the not too distant future. Um, how's the vehicle running? The vehicle is running really nicely. So, you know, the, the power delivery is so much smoother. Um, we're getting boost now from about sort of 1700 RPM. Um, bearing in mind that we haven't done any remapping yet though, so we're still running on the um, remap that was basically uploaded for the GTB 1752 journal bearing, which is obviously this is a ball bearing. So we could see some improvements in spool. Uh, again once the the mapping has been done at the moment what when we're driving this one with sort of part throttle up to about three quarters of the throttle that we would normally use we're not getting any issues at all it's spooling nice and fast the power delivery is really strong um, and it feels really strong all the way through the rev range to the red line um, when you absolutely nail it and you give it full throttle we are getting a slight over boost at about three and a half thousand rpm now that's not unexpected um, because obviously this has got a um 
a much lighter shaft in the actual turbo itself the the actual compressor is a billet item which means it's much lighter and obviously the the inertia of the ball bearings is much less than the journal bearings so that's the reason it accelerates much more quickly so we're going to have to probably do a little bit of adjust adjustments to the mapping just to, to prevent that over boosting because obviously over boosting is not something that you want to kind of just ignore you know you, you it destroys turbos if you if you let it run for too long um the other thing that we've done is we've moved the uh the the oil catch can and uh, the oil catch can was kind of living down the front um now it lives up at the back now you again that's a, a bracket that needs to be made correctly but you don't need to have an oil catch can it's just one of those things that uh, i've decided would be a good idea you know any car that you're going to increase the turbo boost on some of it inevitably is going to leak past the piston rings into the crankcase, which is going to increase crankcase breathing. So it makes absolute sense to where uh, to deal with that issue before it becomes a problem simply by putting an oil catch can in. Um, you know, it's, it's it's just one of those things that makes a great deal of sense and you'd be daft not to. But it isn't an absolute necessity. Could you live without it? Yeah, absolutely you could. But, you know, for the sake of a sort of 15 quid catch can and a, an hour and a half and some hoses, you know, it's not that big a drama. As I've said, uh, heat shields need to go back on. Going to have to grind off this, this, this piece here because it's going to prevent the heat shield from going on. Um, but but once that's all done, it shouldn't be too much of a problem to get heat shield back on. And then it should be looking not like standard but it'll look like it's it's got its dpf on which is what we want it to do because obviously we don't want any issues with mlt failures uh the mlt is due in about six months so we're not gonna have to worry about that for a while but once the heat shield's back on i don't see that being a particular problem as long as it passes the smoke test which it should do i don't see it being a problem so re the, we'll be remapping this one hopefully in the next few weeks i don't expect massive increases in power you know, we were getting sort of 235 bhp before. I imagine that we're probably going to be sort of getting around 242, 240, something like that. So not huge numbers. But what I am looking for is a lot better throttle response. So, you know, when you stick your foot down, you're getting boost a lot earlier. You know, when you're driving along and you're just cruising and then you stick your foot to the floor, the power will immediately be there. There won't be much lag at all because it's got a ball bearing turbo.